Hey everybody, John Wagnon with Dev Central here again, and we are continuing our Whiteboard Wednesday video series, and today we're going to talk about global load balancing again. And if you've watched some of our previous global load balancing videos, you know that we've talked about the wide IP, and when a client requests a uh, wide IP, a fully qualified domain name, um, then there's a series of load balancing algorithms that take place to, to respond to that, uh, to that client's request. So just to give you an idea here, you may have a client out here in the internet that requests a wide IP. And remember, a wide IP is actually not an IP address. It's a fully qualified domain name, like I just mentioned. So it may be something like, you know, f5.com, the most popular fully qualified domain name on the internet, as it should be. And so let's say you uh, request f5.com. Well, there are some uh, there are some uh, load balancing algorithms that take place at the wide IP to figure out which wide IP pool you're going to select. And we talked about those in previous videos, but just to give you a quick reminder, um, there is the round robin there, and I'll just put RR for round robin. There's the ratio, so I'll put ratio, and then there's the global availability, and then there's the topology. Um, those are the four different load balancing algorithms that take place at the wide IP level. All right, so I have, this, I have this drawing up here with these four data centers and all these virtual servers. And so when a client requests this, uh, this uh, wide IP, the question is, what response is going to go back? So again, at the wide IP level, we're going to use one of these four load balancing al algorithms to figure out which pool, uh, which wide IP pool we're going to select. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw a pool, actually maybe three pools here, across these four data centers to give you an idea of what some wide IP pools may look like. So let's say that these two data centers, the entirety of these, all of this is, uh, we'll call it pool, call this pool number one. All right, pardon my penmanship. But all of this stuff is pool number one. Let's say that these, uh, I'll, I'll draw a pool number two, and let's say that that includes just these virtual servers in this data center. So I'll put uh, pool two right here. And then let's say all the rest of these virtual servers to include these in this data center and all these in this data center are pool number three. So pool number three looks, you know, includes all of those. So again, at the wide IP level, the question is, which pool are we going to select and use these four different load balancing algorithms to get to your pool, pool one, two, or three in this case. And so what we want to start talking about now in these series of uh, Whiteboard Wednesday videos is now that we're in the pool uh, based on these load balancing algorithms, which virtual server do we select? Because you can see there's a whole bunch of virtual servers potentially within that pool. And so the question is, which one of them are we going to select? And so I wanted to introduce the concept of, uh, of some different options that exist within the, uh, within the pool. So let's say, for example, we've chosen pool number one here, and so based on, based on this load balancing. So the client request comes in, we've come over here uh, from the wide IP to this pool, and we need to know which virtual server to uh, select. If you're familiar with the LTM, you know that you identify one load balancing algorithm, and then that's the one that you use to select the different virtual servers. On the GTM, you actually get some different options. And so I'm going to write a couple different things here. There's a preferred, if I can spell this right, preferred alternate and fallback load balancing options. And so you can imagine the preferred option of uh, selecting the virtual server is going to be the, the one that you really want to, to have happen. Uh, if that one is not available, uh, whether there are statistics involved and maybe the, uh, maybe, the, maybe the statistics are not available at that point, or for whatever reason, if the preferred option is just not available at that point, then, um, then you come down to the alternate option and you can identify an alternate load balancing um, option, again, within the pool to figure out which virtual server you want. And then again, if the alternate is not available, then of course you go to the fallback. The alternate, by the way, some of the uh, client-based statistics uh, load balancing options are not available at the alternate um, as, as, an, as an option at the alternate level, mainly because obviously if you're at the alternate level, it's because your preferred option has not worked for some reason. And so this is a little bit more limited. Uh, there, there, there are 
there are limits on what you can select at the alternate option, I, I should say. Um, and then finally, the fallback is kind of that, hey, you know, both of these are gone. They didn't, neither one of them worked, and so now we're at the fallback level. The fallback, there's a couple of different options there. You can, uh, you can say none, which fallback to none basically means, hey, there is nothing available in this entire pool, and so it comes back to the wide IP, and then it's going to load balance to one of the other wide IP pools, and then go select a virtual server from that pool. Um, so that's if you select none at the fallback level. Uh, you can also do uh, drop packet at the fallback level. You can say return to DNS and just let bind respond. You can also do a fallback IP as an option at the fallback level. And that would be you establish an IP address that you want, you know, again, if everything else does not work, then, hey, I want to respond with this IP address. Maybe it takes you to a maintenance page or something like that. And so, so I, wanted to, I wanted to go over the concept of preferred alternate and fallback load balancing options within the pool to figure out what virtual server you're going to select. And so once we have that done, then, uh, then we're going to respond with, uh, with, with, the, with the response. So in future videos, uh, we're going to get into the details of what options do you, do you have at preferred, alternate, and fallback. I mentioned a couple of them uh, on the fallback at least. But there's a lot of different options that you can choose at preferred and alternate. Um, well, and then there's some at fallback as well. So. Uh, I hope this, uh, hope this has been beneficial to kind of understand the different load balancing options and where they take place and all that. So stay tuned for more uh, Whiteboard Wednesday videos on global load balancing algorithms uh, and how to fill out these preferred alternate and fallback options. So thanks for watching and we'll see you out there in the community.